Here we go from TimCast.com. Russia activates world's most powerful nuke. The Satan II missile is 1,000 times stronger than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and could destroy the UK in six minutes. Now, I want to slow down there a minute. And the most powerful nuke, there's a variety of reasons why it's described that way. But I think it's fair to say that there is a, a diminishing return on the power of the nuclear weapons we currently have. And it's because, uh, you know, I, I love Moore's Law. You guys are familiar with Moore's Law, right? Mm-hmm. That, they, you know, every two years, the processing power doubles or whatever. Yeah. And then eventually got to the point where they were like, no, it's officially going to stop. But then they did multi-core processors. So they figured out a way that make the law technically keep going. That's the thing with nuclear weapons. It got to the point where we had these very, very powerful nukes. We had SAR Bomba. And then eventually someone was like, I got an idea. Let's just put 12 nukes in one rocket. And now we've got something substantially more powerful. And it's like, okay, well, there you go. So for this one, it is powerful. But we've got nukes that are 1,000 to 1,200 times more powerful than the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The Satan II missile, while massive and extremely powerful, standing at 100 feet high, nearly unstoppable, is one of, I would say, in my opinion, not that I'm a combat expert or anything, one of the most powerful uh, nuclear weapons. It's being deployed into combat duty. And now I already know a lot of people, uh, we've got one super chat from uh, Tim Jake saying that it's standard replacement of obsolete equipment and things like that. Some people are saying, oh, don't be so dramatic. Here's why I think this is, uh, there's, there's a reason we bring this up. I think I have the story right here from the AP. Ukrainian drones strike deep in Russian territory, Moscow says, while a barrage in Kiev kills too. Vladimir Putin said they would not use nukes unless they were facing an existential threat. And now we are escalating to the point. Insider reported just the other day, two days ago, the ruble is failing. And now more Russians are cutting back on buying basic fo- uh, basic fo- uh, goods like food and toothpaste. You've got this th- several now military strikes in Russia. There was a military incursion into Russia from the Ukrainian side. And now Russia is deploying, whether it's a, st- a standard replacement or the activation of their most powerful weapon. We are escalating to that point. The most important thing to understand with this. This is reality. There is no point where someone comes and grabs you by the shoulders and screams, the nukes have been launched, it's happening now. Almost everything that happens is gradually and then suddenly, which means when we look back on history, a hundred years from now, when they look back, they're not going to teach young people, assuming there are people, I don't know. They're not going to teach them that, you know, in today's class, we're going to read about the two year for, for the next two years of school. We're going to be reading about the day to day, you know, monotony of the, the political uh, class and, and politics in these countries. No, they're going to say the date was November, you know, 17th, 2020, with Donald Trump now contesting the election. This led to the July 40, you know, the, 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 the July uh, 15th, whatever. And then we saw one year later the deployment of the Satan two missile, of course, Two years after that, it was deployed and New York City was heavily damaged. That's how quickly it goes when you're when you're going through history. For us sitting here right now, understand this could be something. It could be nothing. I don't know. But this is how it will always be. Another grain of sand is added to the heap. I have to say, when Russia activates one of the most powerful nuclear weapons that we've been fearing for some time, they've expressed the 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 intent to use nuclear weapons in the event they face an existential threat. And now we are entering into war on Russian territory and a threat to their existence. We're a lot closer than we have been in a very, very long time to the use of nuclear weapons. Now, I am not saying they're going to nuke New York or anything like that. But New York did put out a PSA. What was it like two years ago about what to do in the event of a nuclear strike? More importantly, keep your eyes open for an escalation of this war. Tucker Carlson warned that in order to stop Trump, they will declare hot war with Russia officially. I think the first thing we'll see is likely going to be tactical nuclear weapons on in the combat field, nuclear artillery. I do not think we're going to see the use of the Satan II missile on a civilian target like a city that serves little purpose other than to try and end the war outright. I don't think it would be effective uh, uh, this early on in the conflict, but I'm curious what you guys think. <laughs> I think that the 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 fact that they've activated it um, has changed the game because there's, the United States is going to have some kind of reaction, right? The the Soviet Union is, or not Soviet Union, Russia is not going to be able to uh, to put a, a weapon like that into play and expect the United States to not do anything. So I imagine that there's going to be some kind of escalation. And again, it, it's not going to be like the U.S. is going to like just 
uh, start deploying nuclear weapons. But I and I don't know what it would be, but I don't think this is going to go unanswered. And it just goes back to what I've been saying or what we've all kind of been agreeing on is is I don't see the exit. I don't see the off ramp. There's a lot of things that are happening and there has been nothing at all since Russia invaded that has been even that has moved the needle towards uh, a ceasefire, de-escalation, uh, ending combat activities. Nothing in two years now or, so, or year and a half. So I still don't see the off ramp. Turning on nukes is what, you know, everyone's afraid of because Russia's nuclear armed. I I don't see how it gets fixed. There was uh, an attempt at a peace talk between, I think, Zelensky and Putin even early on. And, and then uh, Boris Johnson went down there and ended the peace talks abruptly. And I think Victoria Nuland might have been involved. So essentially, Britain and, and the United States were like, no, 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 no. Peace is not a good idea. We need this war. I don't know. Uh, for a weapon system. Do you remember that? I don't know. That, yeah, that was this is something that people mention a lot. Um I don't have data to pull up right now on me and it's anecdotal, so I can't prove that that happened, but I've heard it a lot. So there is, that would ins at least, you know, that would at least explain that there are some people want, that Zelensky doesn't want the war. I mean, I don't think Zelensky wants the fight. I don't think he wants the people to die. I don't think Zelensky's, he wants to Zelensky's come right out and said <clears throat> that his goal is to totally just take back Crimea. Like yeah. Zelensky said that. Yeah. I, and so he's not, so it's not like he's not looking for any kind of de-escalation or whatever. But, it, well, but it's not Zelensky. It's NATO. That's what I'm saying. It's it's Boris Johnson and Victoria Nuland pushing pushing Zelensky and probably will kill him if he doesn't play it. I don't all. think I don't think they're pushing him. I think they're playing him like a marionette. Man, I uh, it's I, I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 rough that uh that hey, they've look, completely devastated the Eastern Donbass, turned it into mud, and talk, all those people have died. I I don't think anybody wants and, that. And this is war. I mean, Russia's involved in this. They're the ones who who initiated it. I, I find it absolutely hilarious. There's this really great post that said, you know, ways you know that you're a bootlicker for the empire. And it's that you completely ignore all of the things the United States and NATO did to escalate tensions, which resulted in this war. And if and if you bring it up, if someone brings it up, you get offended. And I'm like, right. <laughs> it, the, the, this the politics is not happening in a vacuum. Russia didn't one day be like, you know, Vladimir Putin didn't twirl his mustache and say, I'm going to be evil today. <laughs> no, it's a it's a it's a fight over. Special interests, resources. They need the seaport. Right. They want Sevastopol. They want to fortify the roads down into Crimea through eastern Donbass, the east one, east 97 and mm -hmm. east 105, mm -hmm. those two freeways. And, and if and they can, if they can fortify that, and Russia can take that and solidify their base in Crimea, uh, Sevastopol is the city, yeah. they'll start pumping out oh. goods and services into the Mediterranean Sea, but that will create make Turkey mm -hmm. a vulnerability mm -hmm. for NATO because Turkey's in NATO. Ian, Ian if, I, I, I hope that you are ready to die so that NATO can defend Ukraine's water water port. <laughs> yeah, it's more that they don't want Russia to have it because then they think Russia and Turkey will buddy up and that Turkey will leave NATO and then they will NATO will fall apart. If Turkey leaves NATO, I mean, the, it's, it's, I, it's, I, I, str I want to strongly push back on the idea that without Turkey, NATO falls apart. Well, it's that already kind of trash. That is completely the bigger risk. Just that idea is completely not true. I mean, and it, it's, and a, it's, it's a happen. nuclear power that and controls the Russia's access to the Mediterranean. I think if it's it's with, not just Russia's, they control the Bosphorus, which is all of the Black Sea yeah. into the Mediterranean. It's which is I don't know, mostly Russian. It's Ukrainian also Ukrainian. So they could shut off Ukrainian access to, the, or some of it anyway. What's so wild about it is the hypocrisy. Because Putin's been saying, what, for 15 plus years, do not put NATO troops on my border or else. And I'm like, what, how did we feel about it when the Cubans, or excuse me, when the Russian Soviet Union was putting missiles in Cuba? Yeah. Like, it's a no-go. And if they also, were... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Just there, I just want to say there is new uh, Turkey does not have nuclear weapons. Are you sure? I'm looking at it right what? now. I looked it up. I Googled it. So, And that's part of why we get so many countries in NATO. Is NATO exists partially to uh, limit proliferation of nuclear weapons. That's why you get com countries to join NATO. We offer you protection. We have nuclear weapons. Don't develop nuclear weapons of your own. That was the whole point of the United States being like kind of the big dog in NATO and stuff is to prevent nuclear proliferation. Sorry for cutting you off. No, you're good. Um, Thank you. And, you know, speaking of nukes, you know something we should entertain is the possibility of an EMP bomb. If people aren't familiar, there are devices, allegedly, that, and I don't doubt it, uh, that can take down entire power grids. And they're, they're, I'm pretty sure that's we know they exist. Right. Like a, a nuclear detonation releases an EMP intentionally. Right. I'm pretty sure we've isolated and we can generate an EMP. And, and the like last, a neutron bomb. Right. And the last several uh, Department of Homeland Security uh, heads have said that, you know, a grid down scenario is one of their, their number one con concern because there's so many different things that could do it. It could be a solar flare. It could be bad actors. It could be a hack mm -hmm. job. And there's all these, if you look into this, there's been so many different um, 
uh, electrical grids or um, the uh, substations around the United States that have like had been mysteriously hacked and infiltrated by various hackers. It's like, who's doing that and why? Jimmy, have you ever read the, the book One Minute After? Yes, actually, okay. yeah, yeah. I got an audio book. I got a, a few of those. Book. It's a good book. What's is that, is that about after the nuclear? About after nuclear, about an, uh, an EMP. They, so they shoot oh, an EMP dude. off over over the U.S., light it off about 100 miles up or whatever. The EMP takes out the entire grid. And it's based, I think, in North Carolina. I believe so. Correct? I think it's Asheville is the the, the area. But it talks about, you know, the, the things that could happen and stuff like that. Newt Gingrich actually wrote the foreword to one of the uh, editions. I'm not sure which one. So, But go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say, hey, if you guys want a conspiracy... In between now and the next year, I'm convinced that there's going to be some sort of event. They're going to come at us with some sort of curveball. Like everyone, they're putting out COVID mandates into the media now. And I'm like, I think that there's a sizable uh, portion of the populace that will not comply. I don't know what the percentage is. Even if it's just one out of three, that's too many. And I don't think that they're going to pull it this time. I'm expecting a curveball. So what better, like if you study history and like Sun Tzu and the art of war. So instead of nuking us or doing a, a, a bomb off the coast to flood us, why not just turn off our lights? Let us destroy each other from within. Most people are not yep. prepared. Uh, but you know how most people would die if the grid goes down? Waterborne illness. Most people do not have sterile water. We take it for granted. You well, turn on the faucet and you're fine. I got. I got. I got to stop you right there. You, you said how most people would die. That might not. All right. Most might not be the word. A significant but number. Millions of people right. would die from 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 infection of going to the bathroom because they, they their stomachs can't handle you know that raw water that's going to turn once the water treatment facilities go down. So never mind percentages. Well, well, when, but like when the water treatment plants go down, there's no water at all. Right. So no. in places like New York and Chicago, you turn the faucet on and nothing comes out. And game over because how many what two days without water three days and you're and you're just incapacitated. I, I would say by day two people are drinking each other's blood. Yeah, I, you, I, I am not exaggerating. There was a, a martyr maid has this post about what civil war really is and what people don't understand, and I'm and it really is something we bring up all the time that people just it's like there's nothing you can do about the fact that people live in movie reality that mm -hmm. they don't think about what how the world actually works and so they imagine people marching with uniforms. Martyr Maiden and a couple other people had tweeted, Civil War is like everything's, you know, you're, you're, uh, you know, the conflict is happening. You, you see it on the news. You go to bed, you go to bed and you don't wake up because an, a, a, a warring faction in three in the morning sneaks in your house, kills you in your sleep, takes your stuff. Or you wake up and your neighbor's house is on fire and you see him, his corpse lying on the, on, on the sidewalk because a warring faction came in and he was a target for some reason. These kinds of things are uh, are likely to happen first in a breakdown. So outside of the concept of civil war, right? Like let's let's not be too cliche with Tim Cast here. Let's say EMP bomb nuclear strike. Cyber attack. You know, uh, Rachel Maddow said they're going to shut off our electricity. They could with a cyber attack. Yeah, if our grid goes down, I think we I I if 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 communications go down, that's it. The fabric of the United States evaporates overnight. And you ever play the video game Fallout 3? Yes. I love Fallout 3. It's the best video game ever made. One of them. And uh, the Enclave. Let me, give, let me give everybody a general understanding. I, I assume most of you know Fallout 3. Some of you might not. In the Fallout series, uh, in like, what, 2077, China invades Alaska because there's dwindling fossil fuels and they need access to new resources. War breaks out. Nukes go flying. Planet gets bombarded and most people die. Uh, a large portion of people in the U.S. go into underground vaults to try and survive. In Fallout 3... Uh, I forgot where I was going with this. What, what it would be like, uh, you know, with uh, after the the fallout from it? I mean, yeah. just the, the complete societal collapse and everything else? Yeah, I forgot the point I was going to make because I started explaining the basic story. It was about, like, the Enclave and then you're oh, talking about, like, you got it. There it uh, is. communication. The yeah. right. remnants of yes. civilization. So, uh, in Fallout 3, the bad guys are the Enclave. They're the U.S. government. But they are completely powerless uh, uh, and they have no control over what is the United States. So in, in the Fallout world, there's the new California Republic, which is the remnants of California are rebuilding and forming their own government. But the Enclave is actually the descendants of U.S. military, U.S. government that went into Mount Weather and other bunkers when the bombs fell. When they emerged, they had no way to control what was left. The wasteland. So the, the, yeah, the apocalyptia. So in the event communications go down, how does the military communicate? They, they've got contingencies, I'm sure. And they have protocol for what happens if the, the, the communications go down. But what about local police, federal law enforcement? It is there. There is going to be a decay, a breakdown as as uh, as you get out further and further outside of the government of actual communications. So what happens then 
if the grid goes down and communications are blocked for some reason, we lose the internet, we, we lose electricity, we're turning our radios on trying to figure out what's going on. And then bad people go on the radio and say, this is Lieutenant so-and-so, I'm in charge of this area, and it's a random guy. Then he comes in and says, we're organizing. What if it's a militia? And they feel justified and, and say to themselves, if we don't get a hold of this, it's going to get bad. I'm taking charge. Put out a radio call, put on their militia uniforms, look like military, show up with guns. They're not bad guys, but they're not the government. And now you've got conflicted factions determining, trying to figure out who's in charge and who isn't. It would no. happen. It'd be a power vacuum. You Somebody would try to take it. You need like if you're in a city, you're doomed. OK, so that I mean, we can take the you, you can take like the you're idea doomed. of survival off the table. You're dead. You're a you are a walking corpse. So take if you live. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You're going to be you're, someone's lunch. You're, yeah, you're you're yeah. totally doomed. You have like if you're on Manhattan, you're doomed. You're never going to get off the island. If you're on Long Island, you're doomed. You're never getting off there. If you're in Southern Connecticut, you're going to die. If you're in Jersey, you're going to die. There's the, like, well, well, to be fair, pointing out like. Jer if five percent live, I'm generally right. Is kind of my point, you know. Right, but but you know, for for Jersey, so long as you're not in the peninsula, right? If you're on the islands, Manhattan, Long Island, the New Jersey Peninsula, you're done. Yeah. When when we were in we were in New Jersey when the COVID lockdown started, and there were rumors going around they were going to shut down the bridge. Connecticut already had checkpoints with New York because New Yorkers were fleeing to Connecticut. So when we heard that they were like, that's what everyone was afraid of. They were like, hey, if they, if they lock that down. You're stuck. You ain't going anywhere. You're on a peninsula. So we were like, we should probably leave now. And so we packed up and we we, we came down to uh, where we are now earlier than we, we intended. And that was just the lockdown scare. But uh, to your point, in terms of the the land, uh, areas that have, have access to the larger mass United States have a substantially, substantially higher chance of survival. Manhattan Island. Good luck. Doomed. You're dead. You're not. Look, you're look, not, look, look like, at you Maui. Should, you look should, at Lahaina. Yeah. The police block the one road out. Your best bet is to know your sheriffs and your local law enforcement, or at least be familiar with them. So that way you have an idea of who might have authority in your area. But that ain't going to work if you're in a city with police, because police are not the same as sheriffs. Like they have, they have a different, uh, a different outlook and stuff. And Yo, authority is meaningless. Yeah. In, uh, Guns ha aren't. Have you, but that's where the authority yeah. will, be, will be drawn from. Have you guys seen uh, The Last of Us, the TV show? Uh, yeah, actually, I just started, uh, I just finished up that first season recently. Yeah, I like Very it. Very interesting. You, what people need to understand, there is no good or evil in a conflict. There is survival. And what's, what's going to happen is, dude, you're walking down the street. Let's say it's a month, two months after the, after the, the grid gets knocked out and there's chaos happening and there's conflict. There's people starting to rebuild communications. The U.S. government is still asserting its authority. But as you move further west and things get further and spread further and spread out, communications break down. Distance between cities increases. East Coast may be stable. West Coast will be increasingly unstable. So let's say it's several months later and you're walking down a road and you've got your you know rifle on your back and your water. And then you come across you, you see in the distance there's some kind of settlement and you're like, well, let's go see uh, who's there. And then all of a sudden there's a bang and you're dead. In fact, you're dead before you even hear the sound. The people who live in that settlement aren't going to be like, oh, hey, look, a fellow walking yeah. towards us with a gun. That's let's the thing uh, see about, what he has to say. About video games and this like fantasy of survival apocalypse genre run games. Like, dude, you get hit once you're dead. Everybody dies. Like, but, it's, I mean, it's, but it's not just there's that. There's no fun. It's that depending on the level of conflict, the assumption that you can walk up to any kind of settlement and they're going to be like, howdy, stranger. I couldn't help but notice your arm there. You want to come hang out? They're going to be they're, they're either going to jump out from like they're going to come out from fortified positions. You can't see them pointing weapons at you, telling you to get on the ground. You're going to lose your weapons. You're going to lose everything. And if you're lucky, they'll turn you away and take all your stuff. Right. The, the loot drop. Uh, right. But, and, and maybe they won't kill you or maybe they just do it and think if you find out if you want if, if this person wants revenge, if this person tells someone where we are, we're done. Don't know. Don't care. This idea that you know, everyone's going to be super nice to each other and rolling us together. Crazy, crazy talk. No. no, strangers will be looked at as enemy. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know who you could trust. And, and by the way, like, is, is, you know, like the boom shot, you're dead. 
uh, if you if you get hit in the arm or leg or whatever, you're just wounded. You're gonna get infected and die like a week later uh, in a very terrible, <laughs> terrible way. Most likely, you're gonna bleed out because most people don't have tourniquets. Right. Like most people don't have first aid on them. Well, like you get into a gunfight, your friend gets shot, he dies because he bleeds out because you didn't put a tourniquet in your car. It's, and it's, I guarantee you don't have one in your car. But you have shoelaces. <laughs> a lot of people don't know to, how to use a tourniquet. Uh, right. Exactly. Let me let me let me tell you guys something really simple: a shoelace and a pen. Have a nice day. Google it. Figure it out. But I've got dudes are dead. But it, this is the look. 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 I would. I'd be willing to place a large wager that the majority of people who listen to this show have a substantially higher survival rate than the average person. And it's you have to be paying attention to what's going on in the world to watch a show like this. Mm -hmm. Yo, come on. Every you could be listening to Barstool. You could be talking about the World Series of Poker. You'd be talking about football yeah, or the fucking the, ball game, the drafts <laughs> or whatever. And and hey, man, do your thing. Do your thing. I got no beef. Enjoy your life. Be happy live laugh love whatever but my but when it comes to what's happening in the world maybe it all settles down maybe nothing bad happens you know uh there's there's a, there's, a, there's a big good cause for optimism in uh trump's current polling numbers economic numbers things are looking fairly positive that you know i genuinely believe that while trump is a is far from a perfect individual the trump path slowly winds things things down in fact uh, I don't know about conflict in the United States, but internationally, World War III nuclear bombs. It's the only one that actually might have an off-ramp. There is nothing right. coming out of the Democratic Party or the Democratic establishment or the Republican establishment that in any way indicates that there is an off-ramp for the conflict in Ukraine. But, it is, oh, we got to win, and that ain't happening. But if Trump does get elected, while that may avert us being wiped out in nuclear hellfire, civil conflict in the United States is still a, a, large, a, a high possibility. There is a lot of turmoil coming in the next 10 years or possible in the but next 10 years. But I wanna, I wanna add really, really quick to everybody, just as an aside, download General Survival app. Like, I'm not, it's, it's not a proper noun, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's not proper. Google search, go to your Google Play Store, type in Survival app, download three of them. Also, some cool items are CB radio, shortwave radio that you can talk into to communicate with someone if the grid goes down and you have solar power, and a uh, life straw. Life Straw is the name of the company, but they basically, you can take dirty river water and drink it through this right, Life right Straw. Through, right in the river. You can yeah. stick the straw right in. And a a Baofeng UV5R is a, is a two-way radio. Yeah. Uh, you, I think it's uh, VHS, definitely UHS, and they're like 25 bucks, and they are the most common radio going around. They're super easy to use. Get name. one. You can download, get them for super dirt cheap. Baofeng. I, I also want to say download, download the app called Picture This. Are you guys familiar UV5R, with that one? Five R got it. That's the no. app where like you take a picture of it and it tells you what it is. Basically, Pic right? picture plants, this. Et cetera. Yep. Yeah. Picture this can take a picture. Uh, it takes a picture of uh, I believe it's plants. Yeah, I and think so. That and reminds me. Yeah, tells you if you can eat them. Yep. Buy hard copy books too, just in case there's yes, a situation with the grid. A survival book as well as a first aid book. And there are also books which just made me think of it. Is that depending what region you live in? For example, I'm in the I'm in Arizona. I'm in the Southwest, so I have a book that's literally edible plants of the American Southwest. Yep. And you can do it on any region you're in because, especially when it comes to first aid and other you know survival situations, you know if the internet's not available. All you have is a hard copy, and we take that stuff for granted. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. You can also, also download the Ranger Handbook, which is a legit, the actual military range, like the U.S. Rangers. You can download their handbook, and that's got a lot of stuff in there. I just put a link to it on my Twitter. Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.